Yeah? You can start? Yeah. Okay, let's try. Angela Davis, I'm a little bit excited, a little bit nervous, because it's, it's my second time inside a jail. My first time I visited my mother during the Nazi time. And um, I'm also excited because I think it's for me a very important day uh, since I work as a journalist, important day uh, to interview you, to have the opportunity to speak with you in this cell, in this prison of Palo Alto. Angela Davis, um, first of all, how are you doing after 16 months in jail? Time and again we got alarming reports about your health. Since I saw you 11 months ago in San Rafael, during the preliminary motions, you became a little bit thinner, I think. Um, how is your health? Well, certainly, being in jail has made it very difficult for me to take care of the problems, the medical problems that one uh, normally has. Uh, a number of things have gotten far worse simply because of the fact that no treatment has been available. Um, I don't have anything that's uh, extremely serious, uh, but at the moment I seem to have uh, got gotten this flu that's going around, so uh, I'm not in the best of physical shape at the present. And when, what is uh, with your eyes? Well, apparently, uh, if one is confined continuously for a very long period of time and one does not uh, exercise the muscles that have to do with distance vision, it can cause you to become more nearsighted. And I've gotten progressively more nearsighted since I was arrested in New York. Right, I've yeah. had my glasses changed three times. Three times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, many people around the world have stood up for your freedom. Did any information about this solidarity movement, about this big solidarity movement, get through the concrete walls of this small cell? Well, that's one of the things I think that has uh, allowed me to remain strong. And uh, um, there, there have been many, many letters that have come, especially from the GDR. From the, I think the first week I was arrested, the letters started pouring in. So from the very beginning, there was a huge uh, a reservoir of strength that was being communicated to me from the outside. And of course, I do get information about the rallies and the demonstrations that are held all over the country. I received uh, newspaper articles and magazines, and and uh, it makes me feel very, very good. Very it is strong. helpful for you, this solidarity, to know from this solidarity. It's a help for you. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, uh, to be in prison can be a very uh, terrible experience. I receive letters from prisoners all the time, and it's to receive a letter from a brother who says that uh, he's had one visit in three years, and he's had two letters in three years. For Rochelle McGee, for instance, I think before uh, this case came up, he had received two visitors, I think, in about Ten, in about eight years. And so it's really important for, not just for me, but for prisoners in yeah. general, for them to know that there are people on the outside mm -hmm. struggling mm -hmm. on their behalf. And do you remember some of these letters from outside the jail, from all over the world? Oh, I remember a lot of letters. Uh, the, the letters from the GDR, from the children in the GDR, were particularly uh, beautiful. Um, I remember when they first started to come in jail in New York, uh, there would be postcards with flowers drawn on them, and, and um, all of the women who were living in my corridor wanted to see them, and they th made them feel really good, too, because, uh, I mean, of course, I don't consider myself as an, as an individual, but just one among many uh, men and women who have been, who have fallen victim to the repressive apparatus of this country. And again and again, we, <coughs> we journalists were asked uh, how Angela did grow up. You knew these four uh, children killed uh, during a bombing uh, of the 16th Baptist Church in England? Yes, uh, very, uh, very well. Cynthia Wesley lived uh, uh, just a couple of houses away. Uh, uh, Carol Robertson was a very good friend of my sister's. My mother, in fact, took uh, Mrs. Robertson to the church to pick Carol up 
when they heard about the bombing, not knowing, of course, that Carol was one of the ones who had been killed. Mm -hmm. My mother taught one of the uh, uh, young sisters. And um, I just received, by the way, a very beautiful letter from uh, the aunt of one of the uh, young girls who was killed. Mm -hmm. And she's still very active. And she wrote wanting to know what she could do to uh, mm -hmm. help me. The, the bad thing is that sometimes people don't realize, uh, and especially administrations and people in power, they attempt to uh, veil the whole situation. What, the reason why, for instance, now at a place like Stanford University here, there are 600 black students and not, say, 15 the way there were five years ago is because of the fact that, that <coughs> black students and black people have struggled for this. But now the administrations uh, make, it as a, make it appear as if they're doing this out of uh, the goodness of their heart, or that they've always done it and there's never been any different. Mm. Uh, later you continued your studies in Europe. Um, what were your main experiences in France and in the Federal Republic of Germany? I went to France to study because I, at, at that time, was very much inter interested in French literature. Uh, so I studied um, primarily contemporary French literature and philosophy. At the time I was in France, earlier than this, I'm not speaking of the year that I spent there, I had been a, been a couple of summers, uh, I did have some very striking experiences involving uh, men and women who had fought in the Algerian revolution and who were partisans in the Algerian. Then, of course, uh, at the time I was there, I uh, saw what the French secret police was doing, uh, uh, killing Algerians in the Middle East. And one of the things that, uh, that never uh, failed to strike me is the utmost in hypocrisy is that the French, I've, uh, often you will hear <coughs> French uh, government officials and other people talking about the lack of of racism in France, uh, and they speak of all of the African students who are studying there, and there's no discrimination against black people. But but then there's a whole Algerian situation, which is, which is uh, one of the most uh, uh, terrible and atrocious uh, attempts to put down a people justifiably struggling for freedom in the whole history of the world. Uh. Were you engaged in the movement against the Vietnam War in Frankfurt? Yeah, there were a number of demonstrations that were organized by SDS and, and other groups in Frankfurt, which I uh, participated in. Uh, we um, used to. And do you remember your short visit in the GDR during this time? Oh, yes, very vividly. Uh, in fact... Um, when you visited? When was it? Yeah. It was... 65, no, the spring of 66, I think. Oh, yeah. It was May Day. May, May Day, May. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I w went over and, and participated what your, what in the remember? celebrations. W I, um, oh, I had some, with all that I was there for a very short period of time, it's something that has uh, inscribed itself on my uh, memory because, well, first of all, one of the, uh, uh, I met a lot of very, very beautiful people. I, remember I met people who worked with the uh, radio station there. In fact, they are the ones who invited me to march in their contingent uh, for the May Day yeah. program, which I did. I also met um, some very beautiful uh, uh, young people from Cuba who were there yeah. spending some time in the GDR. I was very struck by... Uh, the fact that the GDR appeared to be a real international center. I met people from all over the world. Uh, Angela, in 1969, you uh, became an assistant professor of the UCLA, <coughs> of the University of California in <coughs> Los Angeles. Why did they fire you twice, and who fired you? Well, I was a member of the Communist Party, and I didn't. I suppose perhaps I was a little naive when I accepted that job because I thought that we had, had uh, this country had advanced somewhat out of the McCarthy period and I never realized that uh, the, the, the regents and Ronald Reagan would pursue me to the degree that they did simply because uh, I was a member of the Communist Party. Uh, but they did in fact fire me the first time explicitly because I was a member of the Communist Party, a mm -hmm. statue 
uh, existed still on their books, the books relating to the university, stating that no member of the Communist Party could teach oh, in the entire university system. <coughs> I wasn't aware of that, of course, when I accepted the job. Um, later, they fired me allegedly because of speeches I had made, uh, not on the campus, but uh, outside of the classroom, speeches primarily geared towards developing a movement to free political prisoners. That's the reason why they fired me the second time, although, of course, uh, 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 although they didn't state openly that it was because of my membership in the Communist Party, it was clear that that's, that's the reason why they did it. And Angela, the spokesman for the U.S. delegation to the World Assembly for Peace in Indochina in Paris, Reverend Paul Meyer, announced several demonstrations against the war in Vietnam set for spring, one of these demonstrations in San Jose. He declared, this action should focus attention on the connection between the war and repression in the United States. Um, Angela, is there anything else you want to say to the people in the GDI? Maybe we can now change the language. If you can, say it in German. Ja, also es ist uh, sehr lange, seitdem ich uh, Deutsch gesprochen habe, aber vielleicht uh, kann ich uh, ein bisschen sprechen. Um, ich habe sehr, sehr viele Briefe bekommen von uh, uh, den uh, DDR, uh, besonders von uh, kleinen Kindern. Und uh, diese Briefe haben mir uh, uh, sehr, ich habe mich sehr, sehr, sehr gut uh, gefühlt, dass ich diese Briefe bekommen habe. Und ich möchte uh, uh, vielen Dank sagen und uh, möchte ich auch sagen, dass die Solidarität, dass die äh, Leute in den DDR äh, gezeigt haben, ist äh, etwas, was ein äh, Modell für, für die ganze Welt sein soll. Angela. Okay, Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Angela Davis, am 8. März feiern die Frauen überall in der Welt den Internationalen Frauentag. Wie ist die Situation der arbeitenden Frauen in den Vereinigten Staaten? Die arbeitenden Frauen und besonders die schwarzen Frauen werden bewusst von der Oppression und der Unterdrückung von den Frauen überall in der Welt. In diesem Moment glaube ich, dass es besonders Wir, äh, wichtig ist, unsere Solidarität mit äh, den Frauen überall in die Welt und besonders mit den Frauen in den äh, DDR, die so äh, äh, die, die gearbeitet haben für die Freiheit äh, 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 überall, überall in der Welt. Dankeschön. My German isn't the best one. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe it's, it's a little bit easier to, to say something to these kids mm -hmm. for a sp special show. I'm still okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, can you address a few words to the children of the GDR, Angela? In German or in English? In German or in English, as you want. Or both. First in English and then one All right, sentence I'll say in German. Okay. And perhaps I could do the, this thing in, in yeah, English okay. a little bit, because okay. my German we, is really rusty. First we, first we do that. Oh, okay. okay, that's once more the question. That was an ex I was expecting it to be in English, <laughs> and then you started talking <laughs> okay. in German. Okay. Uh, once more the question. Uh, on the 8th of March, they celebrate all over the world the International Women's Day. How is the situation of the working class woman in the United States of America? Recently, in the last, say, five years or so, women have become increasingly conscious of uh, the special oppression of working class women. Um, 
although the women's liberation movement in this country has sometimes been portrayed as a movement which exists primarily among uh, non-working women, that is not true. Especially black women uh, have uh, begun to see the need not only to fight against the oppression that women experience, but to fight uh, uh, for socialism, to fight against uh, the exploitation and oppression of all people. Um, the international women's movement, which has a long, long tradition of struggle and of fight on behalf of oppressed people, uh, has been extremely uh, important in, in our movement here, and particularly in my case. And I would like to extend uh, special thanks and appreciation to all of the, uh, the women who have uh, shown this solidarity with me and with our struggle, the struggle uh, to free political prisoners. Particularly, I would like to extend my uh, appreciation and gratitude to all of the very beautiful, strong women in the GDR. Thank you, Angela. And the second, you remember? Uh, okay, you have to make this one more short. Right. Yeah, that's only the oh, children. Well, we won't have time. In order to understand what the prison system is all about, so forth and so on. And in your interview with the um, U.S. television a couple of days ago, uh, you mentioned that uh, they used drugs on prisoners, especially on political prisoners. Can you tell us more about that? There is an organization uh, called the Medical Committee for Human Rights, which consists of uh, doctors and medical workers uh, inclined in a, towards progressive uh, human action. They have done a great deal of research on the health situation in the prisons and discovered that this uh, drug called anectine had been very widely used in a couple of state prisons uh, in the state. The drug is apparently uh, used to deter prisoners from engaging in any kind of um, openly aggressive or openly assertive action. It gives the uh, impression to the person who uh, has taken it that he or she is uh, going to die. And it's supposed to be a, a, an experience that's so terrifying that the psychiatrists feel that it will deter that person from being uh, aggressive. I and see. of course, uh, uh, the prison administration very often makes no distinction at all between us, uh, the, quote, violent prisoner and the politically uh, aware and developed prisoner. Generally, they, when they talk about uh, the violent prisoner, they aren't talking about someone who engages in physical violence. They're talking about someone who stands up for his or her rights. Mm -hmm. In Memphis, um, a black businessman told me there's no more racism in the United States, and uh, nearly 200 feet uh, uh, away, I found 25 uh, unemployed black workers at the corner. Is there still racism? Is that racism, too? Of course that's racism, and that 25, and we talk about uh, thousands and thousands yeah. and thousands. And in this connection, I would like to mention something that, I, that impressed me um, to a very great extent. A friend of mine just went to the uh, GDR, and she teaches, teaches young children. Mm. Therefore, while she was there, she uh, tried to get information about the schools in the GDR. She saw some of the textbooks that were used and was absolutely amazed because uh, it was clear that uh, the textbooks, well, there were textbooks which dealt with the uh, oppression of black people here and also the black liberation struggle. And that's something, of course, you'd never, ever see in this country when the Panthers had uh, coloring books about uh, black liberation struggle. They made up a huge story about that. But she said that it was explained to her that because of the, um, um, the 
Third Reich and the possible um, vestiges of attitudes which may uh, have existed at one time, that the, uh, the teachers explained to her that there's a, a, there's a very, very vigorous effort to uh, um, uh, destroy any discrimination that might still exist. And I've been, I have, I've never seen the books, but I've, every time I've talked to teachers here, I've told them about them, and I've told them I was going to try to get a hold of them so that they could see them, uh, especially, um, especially, best, especially teachers who are trying to work in yeah. the field of teaching uh, uh, you know, black students and also uh, teaching young, young white uh, pupils. Mm. Maybe that someone could uh, send me a couple of Okay. Of the okay. Uh, back to 1970, when they fired you uh, for the second time from the UCLA, a federal judge <coughs> decided a few days ago that your firing was unconstitutional. Can you give me a short comment to this decision? Well, the Ronald Reagan and the uh, regents of the University of California fired me because I was a member of the Communist Party. According to the Constitution of this country. Um, One's political beliefs and affiliations are not supposed to act as obstacles to uh, other activities such as employment. It was clearly unconstitutional. We knew it was unconstitutional. They knew it was unconstitutional. They knew it was unconstitutional, yet they still attempted to uh, 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 get by with it, hoping, I suppose, that they would get a, a conservative judge who would uphold their, their decision. Yeah. Fortunately, we did get a judge who did take the Constitution seriously, so he uh, annulled their decision. Hmm. Another question, and a lot of journalists asked you that question, is um, why you joined the Communist Party <coughs> of the United States? <coughs> why you a member of the Communist Party? 